a lot of things happening over the course of this month. Earlier, we had Nurses uh, Appreciation Week. We had Teacher Appreciation Week, Small Business Appreciation Week. Did you know that the week of May 13th through the 19th this year is set aside as Stuttering Awareness Week? And the numbers of how many people uh, suffer with this, how about one in every hundred people? How about more than 70 million people around the world uh, deal with stuttering? It's like one in every five kids stutter for a time. And everybody kind of knows someone who does it, right? My guest who's with me on the Jersey Central Newsmaker Hotline is uh, the president of the Stuttering Foundation. She's an expert on this as well. She's here to talk about some causes, some treatments, and uh, some really interesting celebrity and pop culture connections as well. Great to have Jane Frazier with us uh, this morning here on WCTC. Hi, Jane. Good morning. It's Burt Barron. How you doing? Good morning, Bert. It's a pleasure to be here with you this morning. Uh, first of all, I had no idea that the Stuttering Foundation even existed, and uh, it's been around for 70 years. But uh, everybody knows someone who unfortunately has to, to deal with the issue of stuttering, right? It's a tough problem. I'll tell you, it's one of the, one of the worst problems that humans can have because you know what you want to say. And you just can't get it out. And uh, so, really, it it's, uh, affects people a hundred percent of their of their psyche. You know, they they know what they want to say. They are unable to do it. So it's it's really a problem that needs to be addressed. And we're excited to have this week focused on awareness, letting people know there's help. Is it mental, uh, Jane? Is it physical? Is it kind of a, a mix of the two? Actually, it is quite interesting. You know, 60 to 80 percent of people who stutter, it's, it runs in their family. My dad stuttered. My uncle stuttered. So that's a very high uh, genetics uh, rate. It's also a neurophysiological uh, problem. Those who stutter process speech and language slightly differently hmm. from other people. So you who are perfectly fluent would process speech a lot better than I would, for example, all across the board. So, of course, people who stutter have a little bit more difficulty, but doesn't mean they're not going to be uh, wonderful communicators. You know, look at James Earl Jones, look at John Stossel, look at uh, all of Emily Blunt. Uh, so there's, there's, no, uh, there's, not, there's no reason you can't become a wonderful communicator, even though you do stutter. James Earl Jones, he has made millions of dollars, Jane, with his ability to speak. He, ha- he has a stuttering issue? That's right. And in wow. his conversational speech, he still stutters somewhat. But, of course, once he knows his lines and once he's on stage, um, you know, it, it, it may also have a lot, a lot to do with the word retrieval. So when he's on stage, he knows the words. He's memorized the words. He's not searching for what he's going to say. Is that uh, why he still stutters somewhat in conversational speech? Who knows? But, I mean, the amazing wow. thing is that it can be... It certainly stuttering can be controlled, and anyone can become a good communicator. Yeah, and I guess it's obvious, too, and unfortunately, uh, one of your more visible celebrities who apparently was uh, a stutterer also, I had no idea, you just lost uh, Peggy Lipton earlier this month, and she dealt with it, too. That's right. It was wow. a few days ago, actually, and I guess she was sort of connected to the music world. So, again, you know, when you sing... Uh, you, you process uh, in a diff- different part of the brain. And also, when you sing, when you think about it, you know the lyrics by heart. So you're not searching for words again. And think about the airflow. So if you're singing, you know, the, the, the air is flowing across the larynx in a different way. So uh, that's quite interesting. You know, Robert Merrill, who's not been with us for a very long time, the mm-hmm. opera star, yeah. said that as a child, he sang to his mother. So if he wanted a cookie or to go somewhere, he'd say, I want a cookie. And he said just it allowed him to communicate. And in that way, he felt that uh, it helped him, gave him the confidence to uh, to continue not letting stuttering hold him back. I think wow. that's the key. Yeah, that's Don't re- let it stop you. No, of course not. That's remarkable. If a parent or grandparent who was listening to our conversation this morning, Jane, has concerns, maybe they have a young child in their family who is uh, showing some signs of, of being a stutterer, don't panic, right? What should they do? Uh, what's the first Absolutely thing they should do? Absolutely don't panic. The more you know about any problem, the better off you are. If the child's been stuttering for some time or you feel that it's severe, like I'm just doing now, really severe and stopping that child, then it's important to seek 
help from a qualified speech language pathologist. But I would also encourage them to go to our website, of course, stutteringhelp, H E L P dot org, where we have a 15 minute video free for parents to watch. It's done by the experts in early childhood stuttering from around the world. So they will get tips right there. They can start today in doing the right thing. One of the things is stop asking direct questions. I don't know. You've heard parents say, what color is that? What did you have for lunch today? What did you do? Those kinds of direct questions put us all under time pressure. So instead, oh, I wonder what color that is. Or I wonder what you had for lunch today. That way, you're not demanding an immediate answer from the child. You're giving him time to think about it. And uh, just small things like that, you'd be amazed what a difference it makes. And this is good advice for all children. I like to always make that point, that anything we suggest for parents of kids who stutter is good for all children. Interesting. Read. Interesting. Read is incredibly therapeutic. Wow. Uh, the way that stuttering is sometimes portrayed in pop culture, Jane, I, I don't know, do characters like Porky Pig or uh, Michael Palin, who I think might have even won an Oscar or was uh, just heralded for his role as a stutterer in A Fish Called Wanda, is this good for shedding light on stuttering or does it make it look sort of like a negative or a bad thing? Well, I think there's a lot of uh, controversy over that. You know, Michael Palin went on to found the Palin Center in London and, uh, They are one of the premier therapy groups in the world dealing with stuttering. Michael's father stuttered, and he said, I'm not about to apologize for playing the role of Ken in that movie of Fish Called Wanda. After all, I got to kill the bad guy by rolling a (laughs) steamroller (laughs) over him. So, so you know, because of Monty Python, he's always going to get the last laugh. But he has gone on to be a real inspiration for children who stutter. So that movie ended up with a fabulous... Uh, result, and that is the Palin Center in London. I'll, I'll, um, I'll never forget it. Cathcart Hotel. I'll never forget what he was trying to say in that movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's always, and you know, for people who stutter, there's always just a hang up word. And it isn't just people who stutter. I think for all of us, sometimes if we have trouble pronouncing the word, we know ahead of time, we see it coming up before us. And uh, But anyway, and Porky Pig, well, you know, there is a professor out there who stutters, and he made a point of collecting Porky Pig items, like a Porky Pig beer mug and a Porky Pig, because he said, I'm not going to let that get me down. Um, so, I, you know, there are two there are attitudes about that. Do you want to just be open and, and, and laugh, or do you want to get your feelings hurt? There's certainly room for both, because... If you stutter, it's it's a tough day from from the time you get up in the morning wondering if you're going to have a good speaking day or bad. And yeah. so you really don't want to see a cartoon character that you think is making fun of you. Um, if you can laugh with him, then that shows you're a stronger person and you've managed to desensitize yourself. But not all of us can... Uh, not all of us are super strong all the time. Yep, you're right. Uh, is there research uh, that continues, Jane, to, to deal with this? Oh, absolutely. Um, really exciting genetic research right now being done by uh, Dr. Dennis Drana at the National Institutes of Health. They have really done remarkable things. They found the first three genes that cause stuttering, and that was a 20-year search. So, yeah, a lot of excitement. And, uh, and you know, once you find the genes, that sort of opens the door. Yeah. To, uh, to other treatments, so it's pretty exciting stuff yeah, going yep, on. Yep. For more information, of course, uh, on the Stuttering Foundation, check out the website, stutteringhelp.org. But, uh, Jane, I think if somebody has something brilliant to say and brilliant to share, you should be able to overcome sometimes the way in which these brilliant words and ideas are delivered and just listen to what the person is saying for what they have to offer. That's how I kind of look at people when, when they want to communicate with me. Excellent. And maintaining eye contact is important. Let them know you're listening. And, um, yeah, it's very important. Listen to the message. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Jane Frazier from the Stuttering Foundation, thank you for the time this morning and uh, enjoy the celebration of this uh, this week that's going on here. And uh, glad to know there's help for people out there of all ages. So thank you for the time today. Thank you so much for having us on and focusing on stuttering. We appreciate it.